Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Glad everybody's here. Um, nice, beautiful day here in Maine today. Uh, sun and everything. Um, a little chilly, um, but hey, when you got the sun out there and everything, I mean, it, it you know makes up for it. So we were uh, really glad. Of course, there is a, a cold going around. Apparently, everybody's been catching it. And uh, so, you know, I've noticed more people wearing masks. Hey, you know, they learned something during the pandemic about protection. You know, you can't, you can't beat that. You know, you wear a mask and you can avoid the flu. <laughs> you know. Um, so, I got two, two videos. One for this segment and one for the second. Um, and this, this, uh, this video that I'm going to play in this segment... Uh, concerns the topic that a lot of people have been chat chit chatting about online uh, about you know how how far is Trump going to take the military to do these things that he wants and can he get away with it um, I've tried my best to kind of explain to people from you know my understanding of the military and having been in it uh, that one of the things that has was taught in there when I was in the service was that you know, yes, you have to follow orders, but if those orders are not, hey, if those orders are not lawful, then it's your duty to disobey, okay? Now, we all know Trump, <laughs> okay? You think this guy cares about the law? Of course not. Christ Almighty, he's wanted all over the damn place, that son of a bitch here. So... You know, after having been president already in this country for four years and the mess he made, the military is going to have their eye big on his ass, okay? They're going to keep watching him. And the minute he opens his yap to give an unlawful order, I, I guarantee you the military is going to come down on him. Now, he thinks, he thinks you know, if he can select loyal people, that's going to that's going to isolate him. That's going to protect him. No, it's not. Because the military is a big organization, and there's not just four or four or five pocket, uh, generals in the military. You've got a whole bunch of people, a lot of them with different perspectives of the law, but still, you cannot guarantee everybody. And what are you going to do, Trump? Are you going to replace everybody from the private that got enlisted in the service all the way up to the general? You're going to have a, a really busy time in your life uh, reorganizing the military so it all favors you. Okay? Well, the truth is, is he's not going to be able to do that. He cannot guarantee himself full immunity uh, from doing, you know, unlawful things. Now, like I said, the Congress is there to, you know, be a stopgap. And then you got, of course, you got lawyers and you got, you know, a lot of lawyers. <laughs> um, and there's going, there'll be fights about it and it's going to drag on and, and, you know, delay, delay, like what Trump has been doing to us making it making sure that he doesn't get anything done and you know going to the supreme court which it always will you know in in this situation uh because now they're the new they're really the new president of this country the supreme court because whatever they say they give the president permission to do whatever the fuck he wants so um so whenever you know if it goes to the court you know how it's gonna go but there'll always be there'll always be an alternative there's always going to be you know, proceeding or writ or some damn thing that's going to have to be challenged, okay? 
And I'll, I'll tell you, we'll bog the fucking courts down so that that way Trump will, his hands will be tied. He won't be able to do a goddamn thing. We can, uh, we can run out the clock just like they can. And uh, he won't be able to do jack shit. <laughs> all right. So, I, you know, the idea that he's going to summon all the military to go round up millions and millions of fucking immigrants and send them back to the border uh, is just ridiculous. Okay, because like, like uh, Papa said, we got, we got international problems going on, and we need our military where it's at right now, especially out in the Pacific. Okay, we, we cannot afford to have our military turning on its citizens at a critical fucking international time here. I mean, you got North Korea and Russia teaming up to go after Ukraine, okay? Even though North Korea just got their ass handed to them uh, really early on in this thing, they wiped out a whole shitload of God, the Ukrainians wiped out a whole shitload of North Korean uh, Co North Koreans uh, in a raid using a, a drone. Uh, it took out all kinds of fucking troops and everything equipment uh, because you know North Korea hasn't really fought a ground war since the Korean War. So every all the military is green as hell. <laughs> they've never fought in a combat. They've, they've practiced, they've trained, but they never actually had uh, fucking physical combat, hand-to-hand -hand real combat. So these people are like brand new to the whole genre of warfare. So they're not really going to be of much use for, for Putin, who's up to his eyeballs right now in shit. All right? Ukraine is pushing deeper into Russia, getting closer to Moscow. They're hitting targets in Russia. Okay? And... Putin, you know, he's sweating bullets. You know, people are really getting pissed at him because he ain't protecting them. So, you know, as it goes on, the pressure is getting worse. And plus, he's he's uh, he's really short uh, on ammo because Ukraine had hit several uh, bomb depots inside Russia. Uh, there was one that was, the explosion was so big, it looked like a nuclear explosion. It scared the shit out of people that saw it and put a... a a 2.1 on the Richter scale for an, a, a shake on the ground. <laughs> so it was a big goddamn depot. And Ukraine hit it. And that was part of the reason why they needed to get help from North Korea. Because they ain't got enough ammo now. And uh, Ukraine, uh, North Korea is only giving them about half of what Russia needs at this moment. So they're still going to be short on ammo, even with North Korea's help. They're losing soldiers, uh, like a thousand men uh practically a day all right so they're short on manpower you know it, it's not looking good for russia but you know if but the, here's the thing if trump goes in there and he, he decides to help out putin okay then that changes everything but you know here's the thing about that because that that goes again against the grain of the country we've been taught uh for what two generations at least about the communists, you know, Russia and the Soviet Union and, you know, they're godless people and we should never trust them. And, oh, you know, we were taught and instilled that the fear of these people will nuke us and everything. You know, after all of that brainwashing and propaganda that was thrown at us, okay, for all that, gen and the military that, that, ev that was born from that, okay, the Cold War, the nuclear buildup, all that shit, do you honestly think the military is going to be 100% behind Trump if he wants to aid Putin over there. <laughs> After all of that, people said, oh, the Cold War is over. Well, let me tell you something. If you think the Cold War is over, you're not really into the nuances of geopolitical politics. It is not over. It's just changed into something different because Putin has reared his ugly head and has turned Russia back into the Soviet Union all over again. So the Cold War ain't over. It's just been reborn. Okay? And so the military in under Biden, you know, Biden, they've been following Biden's directive to, you know, not support them, to, you know, support Ukraine, where they were fighting Russia. Okay? And, you know, NATO isn't friendly with Russia. Everybody's against Russia because they started something that they should not have started. They had no right to go into Ukraine and, and attack them. They were a sovereign nation. Okay? And so they started this. They're in the wrong. Us uh, going in there to help Putin makes us just equally wrong. And then we're the fucking villain. We're the devil. We're the communists. We're the fucking 
people that are godless, all right? Is that how you want it to look? I mean, because I'll tell you, the people who fought in World War II, okay, and grew up during the era, they would, they would fucking shit a brick if they saw the President of the United States helping out fucking Russia to knock down a goddamn country that was democratic, okay, a sovereign country, for, you know, whatever reason, which was, he, you know, Putin made up a fucking reason why he was going in there. He didn't tell anybody the truth, okay? How do you think that's going to look? You know, all the World War II vets are rolling over in their grave right now, okay? All of them. So don't tell me you guys honor the honor veterans and you're, you, you think of the world of them and stuff. No, you don't, because you didn't think about what was going to happen if you put Trump in there and what he was going to do, not just domestically, but internationally. And the rest of the world is, is really, you know, getting ready for the shitstorm that's to come from the United States. And, and I'll tell you right now, our allies, uh, they won't be our allies for much longer if we keep putting shit asses like uh, Donald Trump in the White House, okay? They're not going to trust us after a while. I mean, it's almost like they don't trust us now. They were happy Biden was in there. They thought America learned its lesson, but apparently we didn't, okay? Apparently we didn't. And so instead of doing the right thing, which was to put Kamala Harris in there, they went. They decided we're going back, okay? That tells, tells people right there, you know, we're walking through life like zombies. We're not... We're not, uh, you know, allowing anything, the information we see and hear and smell to sink in to our fucking understanding of the world around us. We're just walking around like zombies, okay? And like zombies, we're all chained together and we're being led by an asshole, okay? That's what's happening, okay? And, and, and I just, I feel like this is, this is, uh, this is why the military is going to have to be uh, the one that stands between us and Trump. Unfortunately, it's up to them now because we can't depend on the civilians to do the right thing. We fucked up. We we did this election and we fucked it all up. Now the military has been put on notice that they're going to have to defend this country against a dictatorship now because we, we can't do it. We can't hold him accountable for the crimes he's committed. We tried that. And too many people are willing to allow rapists sit in the in the fucking Oval Office. That that in itself wasn't enough to make people not uh, vote for Kamala. Okay, they didn't care that Trump was a rapist. They didn't care, you know, that he caused an insurrection and got people killed in the process. They didn't care that he got a lot of people killed by misleading them about a pandemic. Okay, against the advice of the CDC director, okay, they didn't care about that either, okay? None of that cared. They didn't care about any of it. All they wanted to believe was that he was good for the economy and that he's going to do good for the economy and that he's going to get rid of people they don't like, and that's, I'm talking about you, Americas, okay? Because it ain't just Trump that's racist here. There's a lot of you out there that voted for him for that fucking reason is you didn't want to see your neighbor next door around anymore. You're, you're the guy that you're living next to or the family you're living next to that's either Latino or black or whatever. Okay. You figure this guy's on your side. He'll get, he'll clean up your neighborhood. Is that what you're thinking? Okay. So with all that racism and then the sprinkle in with some misogyny because Kamala was a woman and black, you know, you know, that that's, <laughs> And I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's ridiculous is the core value of MAGA. Everything they do is ridiculous. Remember how we were saying that their their campaign was weird? Yeah. Not, I'm not the only one that saw that. Everybody saw that. Everything they do, everything Trump said, everything they would utter was weird. Okay? Everything about them is weird. And yet, they are ones sitting here saying, Oh, Kamala makes me uncomfortable. I don't know what it is about her. <laughs> you know, and, and you hear you got their own people and the guy that they're supporting going around saying shit that's making everybody uncomfortable and we shouldn't trust him. What the hell did Kamala say to you that made you feel uncomfortable? I would really like to know the answer to that because I'll tell you, they don't have an answer. All right. But if there is an answer, would you please tell me what it is that about a Kamala Harris that made you uncomfortable and you do, you couldn't trust her? Please. Okay. Because I would really love to
to see that talking point. All right? And don't give me any link to some fucking news article or anything. I want your personal fucking opinion as to what you think was was so wrong with Kamala Harris that it made her worse than Donald Trump. Okay? I really would like to know that because I think, you know, that answer is really going to highlight, you know, what I've been saying all along about, about MAGA supporters is that, you know, these people are unreasonable. Okay? They have their own selfish wants. And that takes precedent over anyone, even a woman's body, and her right to an abortion. It takes precedent over all of that, okay? Their ability to have a gun, their ability to get rid of people they don't like. These little things, that's, that's the issue that these people vote for, all right? And like I said, this is, this is a really telling time here in our country. We really got a, a friggin' snapshot of America as it is right now in that election and the picture was pretty goddamn ugly okay we're not a very healthy country we are in trouble we're in trouble people those of us who are still holding on to what's left of America okay we're seeing you know the ground caving underneath us from these roaches and termites that are down there trying to destroy it and they're doing a pretty good job at it okay if there's if you're going to measure success okay according to what maga wants they're doing good they're really achieving their goals here on the other hand when they're doing good everybody else suffers <laughs> okay everybody else is suffering because of what they're doing and at the end of the day they're going to regret it and they already are and that's you're going to find that out here in the next video so let's go to a commercial break and we'll be right back. If Donald Trump gives unlawful orders to the U.S. military as commander in chief, will they resist? Will they ignore them? Will they stop Trump from trying to use U.S. military troops against civilians on domestic soil, which is against the law and the Constitution? I'm Michael Popak. This is the Legal AF YouTube channel. Now more than ever, we need you to subscribe to keep us going on the other side now of the election. And I'm at the intersection, and I'm going to talk about the firewalls that we have, the levers that we have to contain and out of control Donald Trump, who never had a good relationship with the Department of Defense the first time around, didn't have a good relationship with the generals, fired many of them, accused many of them of treason after he left office, and even threatened to have one, at least one, hanged, and, and killed in the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Milley. But if they're given an order, don't they have to follow the commander-in-chief in the civilian chain of command? To remind people or to lay it out for people from around the world that watch our channel, our military, unlike other countries, in order to avoid coups, in order to have civilians always in charge, that even the highest brass general, five-star, even if they made a six-star general, is still beneath a commanding commander-in-chief in the president and the head of the Department of Defense, Department of the Army, of the Navy, Air Force, Space Force, National Guard, Coast Guard, and the rest. Civilian control, civilian chain of command defines our military, and that's a good thing. We know from the first time around that General Milley had conversations with his counterpart in China and said, don't worry, we're not going to let Donald Trump start World War III, or words to that effect. That's the beginning of the end of the relationship between Donald Trump and General Mark Milley by telling our uh, enemies that I'm putting my hand between Donald Trump and the nuclear weapon. Good thing. That, of course, annoyed, pissed off um, Donald Trump. Now, what if he does it again? We already know that the Pentagon, Lloyd Austin heading it as a former general, but now civilian, is already doing tabletop exercises, internal strategies of leadership about what would happen if Donald Trump gave an illegitimate order, an unlawful order. The, it, the, it, it, it's um, easy to walk through the scenario of Donald Trump as commander-in-chief or the head of the Department of Defense will be some sort of meat puppet for Donald Trump, gives a lawful order. It's got to be followed, chain of command. That's what happens. They have a constitutional oath that they swore to uphold. 
to follow the chain of command and to protect this country. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an unlawful one. We know Donald Trump pushed the envelope last time. For instance, he had the park behind the White House cleared by the U.S. military, full-blown U.S. military, so he could make a photo op walk across the park to a church nearby with his upside-down Bible. Mark Milley at the time said he would never allow the military to ever get sucked into politics again. And Lloyd Austin, the new, or not the new, the Biden uh, head of the Department of Defense, he just issued a memo on the eve of the election or right after the election telling his leadership and the command structure and all, all members of the military, that he expects an orderly transition, that the military is the finest in the world, that they will remain independent. And I don't mean independent outside the chain of command. I mean independent, not being political, that they will not allow themselves to get drawn into politics. Now, let's separate some things that Donald Trump has threatened or, or that are in Project 2025 and play out the illegal, uh, unlawful order scenario which also there's an oath for them not to follow an unlawful order. And you can see where the lawyers the lawyers and the leadership are going to get together and talk about it. And it may not be at the Department of Defense level. I'm talking about the brass. I'm talking about the three, four, and five-star generals and admirals. And what do they do when they get the unlawful order? Let's talk about an order, we'll talk, and we'll, we'll, we'll walk through the scenario of lawful versus unlawful. Terrible game we have to play, but we're going to have to play it with Donald Trump. Donald Trump wants to put U.S. military troops to strengthen our border, especially at the southern border, um, to help uh, reinforce customs and border patrol resources. Let's just face facts. Nothing that Donald Trump wants to do, from deporting 11 million people to shoring up the southern border, can be done with the current budget and the current personnel. Let me repeat. The current budget and the current personnel are insufficient by about tenfold to do a deportation of 11 million people and to strengthen the southern border, right? right. They're not, uh, uh, in the amount of people that it would take, they'd have to bring in and hire immediately, and it will take years to hire the amount of people. The way to short circuit the budget and the allocation issue through Congress is to, out, is to have the military do it. Order the military to the southern border on domestic soil on this side of the United States, of course, to shore up those things. Some people might think that sounds like a great idea. We should have the military on domestic soil. And then, then other people think, isn't that a violation of things like the Posse Comitatus Act, which is put in place right after the Civil War to make sure that we didn't use federal troops against American people or in American cities, even uh, even in this scenario? Now, Donald Trump will claim under the Alien Sedition and Alien, um, the Alien Espionage Act, um, or the uh, the alien uh, yeah the alien sedition act sorry that we're under attack that these are people sneaking in through the chicken wire the barbed fence holding babies to try to get to freedom we're under attack and they have to be repelled by the military that's sort of a gray area for ethicists within the military to guide the brass about whether that's lawful or unlawful my uh, belief is that while it's borderline unlawful that the military will pick their battles, um, no pun intended, and that they will allow themselves to be deployed to the southern border. border. National Guard uh, also falls into that category. Um, What if he wants, though, let's take it to the next thing on the continuum. Donald Trump orders the military to take the lead in rounding up, processing, putting into internment camps, and um, deporting 11 million people. Uh, That would, by the way, even if you employed the entire military to do that, it would take a couple of years, lots of planning. It wouldn't happen on day one, as Donald Trump likes to say. It would happen, I mean, if it happened in day 366, I would be shocked, even with the military. And every resource that Donald Trump would deploy from the military to handle his deportation fantasy is making us less safe in national security. It's compromising our national security. It's one less war that they can fight because they're fighting the war for Donald Trump politically. So now we're into the area along the continuum where I see this as being not only an unlawful order of the commander in chief and of his civilian leadership below him, but one that the brass and the military may sort of link arms and oppose. 
Now, what could they do? They could not follow through with it. Donald Trump could start mass firings of generals and admirals. He could promote people that are Trumpers. You know, you can even move them up from the bottom. Take Why not? Take a lieutenant, take a captain, make him a three-star, four-star, five-star general overnight. Commander-in-chief can do whatever he wants. Uh, and he's immune from being sued and or from criminal prosecution related to it based on this United States Supreme Court decision over the summer. So, but, you know, listen, there's going to be, a, there, there, you think protests in the streets happened the first Trump administration? Wait till you see this one, when he tries to use the military who have resisted and there's resignations in order to avoid deployment for a civilian operation on domestic soil to round up human beings, other human beings who are looking to live in dignity. And and uh, and as I said, it's not just finding them, it's finding them, processing them, putting them into temporary housing, which is a concentration camp, and then deporting them and coordinating the politics and the diplomacy of it on the other side. To, to, what do you mean? You just show up in Mexico and open the doors and say, here? I don't think that's how travel works, nor how uh, a giant transport plane holding a lot of illegal people with with little or no identity or identification in another country, some of which they've never lived in. I don't think that's how that's going to work. Okay, so that's where I think you we're going to start seeing line drawing by the U.S. military, the civilian brass, most of whom do not respect Donald Trump, don't think think he's a threat to America and are going to be on high alert not to follow unlawful orders. Now let's take it in, in the long the continuum from there, where I think they're going to draw a line in the sand, to the next place Donald Trump and Project 2025 have threatened to use the U.S. military against its own people. This is under the enemy within, right? The enemy within, the liberal media, the liberal... Uh, radical liberals, the people that were my enemies, Donald Trump's ever expanding uh, uh, who was naughty and who was nice list, like he's some demented Santa Claus, that list, right? And so what is he going to do? He's going to use the military to shut down operations. He's going to send the military forcibly through over governor objections in blue states to have them work on crime, to put people in jail, to jail journalists who are also the enemy within and and uh, the enemy of the people, according to Donald Trump. See, there, I think it goes beyond mass resignations of the military. I think you may see a general take to the podium in the public square and say, we cannot file follow this unlawful order and will not. Now, Donald Trump will threaten court martial and maybe even a firing squad or whatever. But I think it's at a certain point, the brass, which is by and large not apolitical and certainly not Trumpers, would step in. They know Donald Trump um, has made disparaging comments about the military, military brass, wounded, wounded war heroes, veterans, soldiers, John McCain, and the rest. And I think it all kind of comes home to roost on as the issue gets more, the order gets more unlawful as they move forward. I mean, let's remember, within a month of the election, Two generals who worked under Donald Trump, General Milley and General Kelly, both four-star plus generals, said that Donald Trump's a fascist and he shouldn't get anywhere near the White House ever again. Even Mark Esper, one of a revolving door of Department of Defense heads, the head of the Department of Defense under, under Donald Trump, said the exact same thing, that he's mentally unhinged and shouldn't get near the White House. So... I think, as you can see, it's going to come into this analysis of lawful versus unlawful. Now, some people are asking, I'm sure, what about the courts in all of this? I mean, people can run to court, try to compel through writs the military to follow the commands of Donald Trump, and then it's up to some sort of federal judge to decide whether Donald Trump has the power to do such a thing. The people that are going to be running into court in that instance are going to be the Trumpers. They're going to run to favorable courts that they have and favorable judges that they have. I mean, 81 percent of the federal judiciary was not appointed by Donald Trump, but he'll find all the ones that were whether they're in Texas, Louisiana, or other safe havens for Donald Trump, and try to use circuit courts to his advantage that are in his favor, and try to get the Supreme Court to say he's the commander-in-chief. You got to follow the commander-in-chief. You know, it's not, it, but it, that's where they have to, they have to sort of, you know, um, it, they, they fumble at that moment, because lawful versus unlawful orders is the province of federal judges to decide. 
Now, maybe the Democrats, the progressives and others run to court first to get an order and try to protect the generals. But these are things that will play out based on uh, how concerned the military is about the return of Donald Trump. Look, there's already been reporting that even when he was in office the first time and came in with some people that were trying to be adult and restrain him, uh, that uh, they kept away from Donald Trump a briefing book about all the laws at his disposal that he could use against the American people, like the Insurrection Act, like the Alien Sedition Act, right? Like martial law. They kept that playbook away from Donald Trump for a reason. This new group coming in, they're, 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 they're being loyalty tested within an inch of their life this time around by a combination of Don Jr., Trump, Howard Lutnick of a Wall of, of Wall Street, never never worked in a White House before in his life, but he knows how to apply a loyalty test uh, and and the like. And so there's there you know no controversy, no um, objection is going to be brooked here, and we're going to follow it right here every moment. We have to. We had no choice. Uh, part of our, our job here on Legal AF and my job as the chief curator is to keep focus, organize. Abandonment resignation is not a strategy. We got to both use the court system to our advantage and call out unconstitutional conduct and outrageous out conduct by Donald Trump and then try to get to the right federal courts to control him. And we'll follow it all and we'll call for it all right here on Legal AF. Take a minute again. It's so important, more important now than even before to hit the subscribe button, right? And uh, and make us durable and lasting. And the larger we get as a as a channel, the larger your voice is heard. So until my next content, I'm Michael Popak, and I'm reporting. This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you. Original. Breaking the law. 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 Breaking the law, 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 breaking the law. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. 
people can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Be a part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax, November 6th to the 18th, and St. John, November 20th through the 26th. Okay, so here, here's the next video here um, from Midas Touch here. And it's about how people, MAGA people, are finally getting ex it explained to them <laughs> uh, what a tariff is and what Trump meant by that because apparently these folks thought this tariff was going to be a good thing. But now they've been taken to school and they've been told exactly you know, what, you know, <laughs> as basic as we can make it for them to understand what a tariff is. Because now, you know, people have been telling them and explaining to them, and now it's starting to dawn on them that they got hoodwinked. Because the people they've been listening to has spun them a web of lies that they took hook, line, and sinker. Okay. And now, <laughs> now they're wishing that they didn't vote for him now. Okay. But... Anyway, let's go to that video and then I'll get you on the other side. In Warnia. My name is Brett Micellis here with the Midas Touch Network. Be sure to hit subscribe and help us get to 3.5 million subscribers. Let me show you this from the Google Trends. They track what people are searching and you could see that during the election, the night of the election, what was one of the top searches? Change my vote or how can I change my vote? You could see the spike right here on this trend graph um, which it spiked that day. And if you look at the actual specific states, the interest by subregion region for this search, you see that there are some states that are pretty important in the election. You see at number one, Oklahoma, number two, Utah, but then you see number three, Wisconsin, number four, Pennsylvania, number five, North Carolina. Now that is instant regret that we are seeing. And those weren't the only types of searches that people were making the night of the election. Here's another one. Are tariffs bad was a popular search term. You could again see it spike right around the time of the election and on election day and election night. And you could look at the popular subregions to where this post was made. You could see number one, West Virginia, number two, Minnesota, number three, Michigan, number four, Iowa, and number five, Pennsylvania. You know, I don't think people quite realized, maybe because the corporate media wasn't covering this often, I don't know exactly what it was. Maybe they were just so distracted by Donald Trump's antics, but a lot of these voters did not realize how damaging Donald Trump's tariffs would be to them. They thought that it was a tax on China and not on themselves and that it wouldn't lead to higher prices for themselves. And Walter Masterson, who's an incredible comedian, who's here on YouTube, make sure you follow him, make sure that you're subscribed, He's a great TikTok account too. Make sure you follow him everywhere. He did this amazing piece where he interviewed a small business owner and a Trump supporter about tariffs. And the guy at first clearly did not understand what tariffs were and how they would affect his business. But as Walter explains it to him, you could see his reaction change throughout the video. You could see this guy, the instant regret just in his face by the end of this video. Watch this. I'm voting for the man that's going to take America back, baby, Donald J. Trump, man. What's one of your biggest issues? Probably going to be uh, inflation, because I sell t-shirts and all that stuff. Your t-shirts are made in the USA? No, my blanks? No. See, that's the thing Trump's talking about. If we tax them, hit tariffs, the same 
item they're making over there will cost the same to make over here. We pay the tariffs. Well, so, the companies pay the tariffs, not us. China doesn't pay the tariffs. We do when they come in. What did Jesus do for you? No, it doesn't work like that. Like if I'm buying a, a thousand shirts from China and there's a tariff on it, I'm paying the tariff. Well, no, whoever's getting it imported in is going to pay the tariffs. Yeah, yeah. I'm the business owner. I'm paying the tariff. China doesn't pay it. I pay for it. Well, and like that, if I'm the business owner and I buy a thousand shirts. I see what you're saying. I'm, I, China's not, Jolly. So I'm trying to so explain. who pays the tariff? They're paying the tariff. Do you think that? Do you believe that? Uh, no. I was trying to say, because I so, sell merch as well. I sell, I sell you something for $10, right? You're going to sell it to him for $20. Exactly. But then I make you pay me $15 for it. Are you still going to sell it to him for 20 Am I going to sell it to him for 20 If I raise the price $5. Oh, it's going to have to go up. Right. So yeah, the consumer pay, foots the so bill. I mean, just brutal. I mean, if more people knew about that, if more of his supporters actually knew about that, how these policies are going to affect them personally, I'm not quite sure they would have voted in the same way. Here's what Mark Cuban has to say about the current situation due to Donald Trump's election. Mark Cuban writes, right now, every company that imports from China is taking all the cash they can muster and buying up as much as they can and stuffing it in a warehouse in anticipation of the tariffs creating accelerated demand for imports. That money would have been used for expansion, raises, bonuses, and other operational elements. Because cash is relatively expensive and it costs money to store inventory, those companies will increase prices as if they had paid the expected higher tariffs. On the flip side, companies that export are expecting retaliatory tariffs. So they are calling their Chinese buyers and begging them to do what American companies are doing, buying up all they can. Sounds good, more sales now, except they have to accelerate buying up all the components in the bill of materials, which may be at a constant price today, but if other companies need those components, the price goes up. When those retaliatory tariffs hit, the companies have to pray that the companies in China they sell to can afford their products, or far worse, possibly the Chinese government tells them, if they can, to stop buying from the USA altogether. This is all happening right now. And then Mark Cuban says, if anyone has examples of this, I would love to see them in the replies, and I'll also extend that to you over here. I would love to hear if you have any examples of this as well. To that point, here is a post that we have seen that is outlining this exact issue. This individual writes, results have already started. This is from an American woman today. My husband works for a small manufacturing company in here in southwestern Pennsylvania. That means most employees are Trump voters. When the president of the company sat them down today to tell them their annual Christmas bonus would not come this year because they now need to purchase at least a year's worth of products prior to January 21st due to the proposed tariffs they did not understand. My husband said that their president had to explain what a tariff is and how it will directly hurt their company. They all thought the foreign company paid the tariff. This is the level of ignorance voting against their own interests here in Pennsylvania, where we failed American women and children the night of the election. Here's another story posted by John Cooper. Cooper writes, my MAGA neighbor five minutes ago, quote, I just read that tariffs are going to raise prices for stuff. I don't get it. I thought China was going to pay them, end quote. I explained how tariffs work. I wish you could see the look on the guy's face when it sunk in. So much ignorance out there. And I want to make it clear right now, the current state of the U.S. economy, maybe bookmark this, screenshot this, because you know that MAGA is going to try to take credit for Joe Biden's economy before Donald Trump destroys it. As this person lays out, MAGA. As of today, inflation is at 2.1%. Unemployment is at 4%. GDP is 3%. Manufacturing is booming and only getting better. The economic boom you're about to credit to Trump was brought to you by Joe Biden. And when it crashes, that will 100% be on Trump. I'd like to speak with you for a quick moment about climate and make clear that this issue will always remain a top priority for us here at Midas Touch. And activists across the country are already working hard to ensure that we not only protect, but build on the climate success of the Biden-Harris administration. After the election, Lori Lodes, who is the executive director of Climate Power, spoke at a press conference in Washington, D.C., alongside major climate action groups, laying out the stakes of the 2024 election for the American people.
Lori emphasized that thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, over 330,000 new jobs are now being created across the U.S. Energy costs are falling and cleaner energy is rapidly becoming more accessible. She drew a powerful parallel to her time defending the Affordable Care Act, noting how when threatened, people realized what they would lose. Lori warns that if Republicans dismantle the Inflation Reduction Act, it's not about some sort of abstract law. It's about gutting good paying jobs, slashing tax credits that ease energy bills, and derailing community progress, particularly in local economies. And when that actually hits home with communities like it did with the Affordable Care Act, the pressure can become far too great on the anti-climate forces in the GOP, and their efforts can completely collapse. Heck, even Speaker Johnson and key Republicans are divided on this very issue, with some in their ranks standing up for those clean energy investments. But Lori says just as people united to defend healthcare, communities, workers, and leaders across the country will stand strong to protect clean energy jobs and progress, refusing to let this hard-won momentum slip away. So Midas Mighty, let's stay strong, let's protect these jobs, let's protect the future of our country and our planet. Now. Let's get back to the video. Here is another woman online that is sounding the alarm that Trump's threat and tariffs are already causing her small business to pay more. And I want you to keep in mind, this is not a Trump supporter, but she is explaining how these tariffs are already affecting her own business and therefore how they are affecting businesses already throughout the country. Watch this. So it's already started. I um, import products from overseas, products that are made of materials that are not produced here in the US. They haven't been produced in the US for, I don't know, 50, 60 years. Um, so no matter how much I wanted to pay, I could not get these materials here in the US. And all of my manufacturers have sent me emails letting me know that because Trump was elected and he has threatened tariffs, um, all of the pricing will go up in January in anticipation of these tariffs. So the goods that I buy will cost me more money, not the other country, and then I will have to raise prices that I sell them at to make that up. So it's already started, and for people who didn't realize what a tariff was, uh, you're about to find out, okay? Because it's going to affect everything that you buy because there's not a product on the shelf that doesn't have some element of it that comes from another country. So, good luck. And now we are starting to see large corporations also announce that they are going to have to implement a massive job cuts and slash their sales forecasts for various reasons, one of them being due to incoming raises in prices due to Donald Trump's tariffs. We see here from Fortune, Nissan announces 9,000 job cuts and slashes sales forecasts as it faces severe situation. And this is due to Nissan's plummeting sales and also the fact that they are expecting higher and higher prices in the coming year due to these tariffs. Tariffs. They say the following. When asked about Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. presidential election, the CEO of Nissan said that the company was, quote, hearing various things like tariffs, but it's not just us. Quote, we'll be lobbying in the direction of our medium to long-term plans should remain, but we will conduct our business while monitoring the situation carefully. Here's a report in the Detroit News about Stellantis. Stellantis cutting 400 jobs at Detroit Parts Warehouse. Stellantis NV plans to cut about 400 union workers at an East Detroit warehouse warehousing facility early next year. The indefinite layoffs will affect all United Auto Workers represented employees at the Freud Street Parts Sequencing Facility, which is near the company's Detroit Assembly Complex Jefferson plant. Stellantis said it's transitioning operations to a third party. Quote, as Stellantis navigates a transitional year, the focus is on realigning the U.S. operations to ensure a strong start to 2025, said a statement on the layoffs sent by their spokesperson. Here is an article from CNN outlining the threat of Donald Trump's tariffs. Would have been nice if they did this before the election, uh, but here's what they have to say right now. CNN writes, you will pay for Donald Trump's tariffs. Here is the proof. They say the following, but if you don't want to heed the many, many economists' warnings about former President Trump's fringe economic plans, take it from the people running the companies that make the stuff you buy. 
Prices will go up. How much and how fast is hard to know, but you could bet your bottom dollar that you'll be needing more dollars to pay for everyday goods if Trump's sweeping tariffs are put in place. Quote, if we get tariffs, we will pass those tariffs costs back to the consumer, said the CEO of AutoZone. AutoZone won't need to wait until the policies are enacted, the CEO noted. Once they know what the markup will be, quote, we generally raise prices ahead of that. And I want to share this as well. We've seen a lot of gamers getting the back of Donald Trump, especially these Gen Z gamers supporting Donald Trump. Well, we're now learning that the price of game consoles is about to spike because of Donald Trump's tariffs as well. Here are just some of the headlines going around the various tech publications. Here's one. Trump tariffs will make video game consoles up to 40% more expensive. Here's another. Console prices could skyrocket by 40% due to Donald Trump's victory. Tariffs can make a PS5, a PlayStation 5 Pro, cost up to $1,000 US dollars, experts say. Here's another headline. Trump's proposed tariffs could hit game hard study finds. Well, I guess it was all worth it, MAGA. Enjoy paying those higher costs while Elon Musk's net worth skyrockets to $313 billion this week, as estimated by Bloomberg after Donald Trump's election. And as Yashar Ali notes, when Musk reaches $401 billion, which is inevitable, he will become the richest man in history who is not a monarch or head of state, even when past fortunes are adjusted for inflation. His net worth will be around 1.4% of the GDP of the United States. Additionally, his network will fully exceed that of his birth country, South Africa. But sure, he's looking out for your best interests, MAGA. Okay, this is a Nigerian-American who supported Donald Trump, had his back the whole way during the election. And following the election, he was in one of these MAGA chat rooms, these live chats with his fellow MAGA supporters. And a fellow Trump supporter told him that because he is black, he will never actually be accepted in the movement. Watch this. MAGA family, I was on TikTok Live and a fellow Trump supporter said that all he needed was my vote. I'll never be part of the MAGA family and that I'm black. I'll never be accepted, but he just got my vote. Nah, that's crazy. Like, I love MAGA Nation. I love the MAGA family. And that breaks my heart that someone would speak to me like that right after the election, that all I was was a vote. Nah, I love all you guys. And I know most of you MAGA family members are not racist. And I love you guys. And I'll keep repping MAGA Nation, Trump 2024. But that really broke my heart that some guy would say that. Extremely heartbroken. And now I want to share with you this story written in the Statesman, statesman.com. They say the following, quote, an undocumented immigrant from Guatemala says the odds of Trump improving the economy is worth the potentially higher risk of deportation. Quote, Trump wants to deport people who do bad things. I have not broken any laws. Uh, I hate to say it, but have you been listening to this guy at all? Well, maybe I should show you at least what he's saying right now and what his supporters are saying right now, what the people who are going to implement these policies and result in your deportation are saying right now. Here's Senator-elect Jim Banks dismissing concerns of the business community about deporting as many as 15 million people in the United States, saying, quote, a mandate is a mandate. Watch this. Who will say... We need, we need these people. They are workers that uh, really fuel our businesses. And then aside from business, just even taking agriculture as an example, I wanna read a quote from Michael Marsh, president and CEO of the National Council of Agriculture Employees. He says, from an employer standpoint, you're very concerned when you hear somebody talk about deporting a significant amount of the existing workforce. What do you say to him and others who really do rely, even hospitality, who rely on these undocumented migrants? A, a mandate is a mandate, and the president winning the popular vote on Tuesday is a strong signal that this is what the American people, the public, expects us to do. Mm -hmm. And I, only Republicans who completely misread the moment, who don't understand what the mandate means, and I don't think there are ve very many of them left in Congress. Well, don't say we didn't warn you, MAGA. You broke it. You bought it. Trump and Republicans are about to control every lever of the government. So I don't want to hear any excuses as this all continues and they start to feel the fallout of their choices. But in the meantime, here's what we're going to do. We are going to hold Trump accountable. We are going to expose him every single day. And that's only possible thanks to you. So leave your comments and let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all soon. All right, so there you are. Uh... As you can see, and it's, it's sad, but 
all this happening after the election. Why didn't they do this before the election? I'll tell you why. Because the media was more interested in keeping this election into a horse race. They were deliberately feeding us false polling, okay, false polling numbers, making it look like the race was neck and neck. All right, that was manipulating the voters by doing that because it kept people engaged so that way they could sell their advertisements. Okay, then they'd, they wouldn't really cover, you know, the, the issues that Biden accomplished, okay, to counter what, the, what Trump was saying about Biden, okay? There's no more need now for equal, equal time. Fair, the fairness doctrine is gone, okay? So we don't, they don't have to do that anymore. They just pick a side. And the side they picked was Donald Trump. They love Trump. The, the CEOs that run these media companies love Trump. He sells papers. He sells fucking ads. All right? Kamala didn't. Okay? They didn't even give her a chance. I mean, she came into the election, uh, to the campaign late, you know, with 107 days to, to make a, I don't know, a, a bounce back, you know, for the Democrat Party which she did, in my opinion. I think she did great, and probably the best fucking campaign in 107 days that I've ever seen in the Democrat Party, believe it or not. And that's saying a lot. But she came into that thing, and she energized, you know, what I guess what you could say is a base, a Democrat base that, you know, felt like, you know, we gave up because, you know, Biden had stepped out of it. And, uh, you know, everybody had their hopes on him. And people really didn't know Kamala that well until she got into the race. And then they loved her. Okay. But even although that, all those things was happening, the messaging was where they fell flat. And I'm talking about the Internet. Because the Internet is where everybody goes today to get their information from. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, you know, you name it, everywhere. That I mean, that's anywhere somebody's in there talking or something like that, like Nick Fuentes, okay? Uh, people like that. That's, that's what grabs people's attention. So these people get online, and they listen to the fucking bullshit propaganda that these fuckers spell. Well, they were sitting here laying out all kinds of misinformation about a fucking, uh, you know, a tariff. <laughs> And everybody watched that, believe in it. They would never explain it, how that was going to benefit Americans, but the people were believing it, just on faith. You know, take it on faith. These people aren't going to do you wrong, right? You know, that's, that's the problem with faith, isn't it? Because you have to put aside a lot of intelligence to have faith. You have to put all that aside, which is why I say you can't just, you can't be religious and not have faith because religion requires that you're stupid. <laughs> you got to be stupid not to, you know, to to have faith because if you try to question what you're being told about your your religion, okay, your everything the answers you get are not going to answer your question. It's all about you got to believe. You have to believe. You know, I'm holding a hammer in my hand. You got to believe it. You got to have faith that I'm telling you this is this is true. I have a hammer in my hand. Okay? That, that's what I'm talking about. Even though your eyes are saying no, you're supposed to, no, don't believe your eyes. But that's what they were doing. They were telling these people that this is going to be a good thing. All right? Well, after the election was over and everybody, and they were interviewing some of these MAGA people and they were being asked, you know, uh, why did you vote for him? And they started to say, oh, the tariffs are going to do this country good. And the interviewer would say, you, do you realize what a tariff is? You know, and they, they were trying to get, you know, getting their fur up a little bit. And, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, they had to spell it out to them. <laughs> you know, and when, uh, when that happened enough times, all of a sudden they started to go to the Internet <laughs> where they've been hanging out all this time, where, they, where the truth was right at their fingertips. They decided to look up a tariff and have that explain to them how a tariff works. When enough people read that and they saw that, now buyer remorse has set in. Okay? what He lied to us about that. What else did he lie to us about? Well, you people, you see, blind faith. That's where that leads you. Right off a cliff. Now you're falling off that cliff and the ground's coming up at you. All right? Unfortunately... You know, as Americans, we're all chained together in this fucking shit. Those of us who knew what a rat was 
tried to explain to you, you know, what a rat is, you wouldn't listen. <laughs> you wouldn't listen. You didn't want to hear it because to you, you treat this like a football game. Never give in to the other side. Never admit defeat. Okay? Bullshit. There's always a right and there's always a wrong. What you do when you're in the wrong is you learn from your mistake and don't repeat it. But you didn't do that the last time, did you? Four years of Trump, four years of living hell, and you didn't learn anything from it. <laughs> you didn't learn anything from it. Okay? You have no one to blame now but yourself. The Democrats have tried and tried. I, I, oh, Christ, have we tried to smarten you people up into making you understand this is not your guy. Okay? Even the Republicans, some Republicans were trying to explain to you, this is not our guy. We don't want this man. He's dangerous. He's corrupt. The people he hangs around with are equally dangerous and corrupt. Okay? You don't run to the fucking uh, uh, meat grinder when you're the fucking hamburger. I mean, Jesus. You know, I, I don't know... Uh, and, and, and the thing about, you know, the black guy who was wearing a MAGA hat and he, and he says, you know, he's proud to be MAGA, but then the, he talked to somebody who was MAGA and said, you'd never be accepted into the MAGA nation. And he, they call themselves a nation. Okay, you'll never be accepted into the MAGA nation because you're black. You know? And not only that, but if anybody Latinos were wearing a hat, they would get the same shit, the same answer. You, you're not going to be welcome with us. We don't want you here. We were happy to take your vote, but no, we don't want you here. We use you for your vote, and now we don't want you. That's what they're that's what they're basically saying. We said everything you wanted to hear, and now we're reeling it all back in. We're coming after you. And a lot of people are going to feel completely betrayed, you know, and all I can say is great. Because by the time we go through the first two years of his presidency, when we get to the midterms, there's going to be so much fucking regret about Trump and so much anger and misery, you know, from what he'd done, okay, and what he's done to the economy, because he laid it out, you know, there's already companies bracing themselves for the fucking tariffs that are to come, all right, people are going to lose their jobs, the price of goods is going to, you know, double, talking about that fucking PlayStation thing that's going to go up twice what it's worth, okay, you know, how do you think that's going to affect the economy as a whole? We're going to end up in a fucking recession. When people can't afford to buy things, you end up in a recession. And remember what Elon Musk said. He told everybody we're going to go through hell first. Okay. Well, I, that was probably the most truthful thing that's, that cocksucker ever said to anybody was that right there during that campaign. We probably are going to go through hell first, and it's not going to stop until he's voted out and we get a Democrat back in there again. All right? And that's why I say, when somebody tells you who they are, and, and we, can, we can pretty much assume Trump was telling us all the truth about the things he was saying, right? Because nobody in their right mind would ever utter the shit, the, the, uh, the racism that he did. So he was being truthful to us about that. So... When somebody like Trump says these things and tells you and reveals to you who they are, you fucking believe it. Okay? You fucking believe it. Don't let these, these people hoodwink you. You're smarter than that. Okay? You deal with day-to-day -day people. People who aren't running for an office. People who are just out there delivering the mail. You know, checking you out at the register. Uh, sweeping the floor. You know... If any one of these people started talking to you the way Trump did, would you think that was ha 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 funny? You know, and oh, he's such a great guy, or he's such a great gal. Would you think that? Of course not. You'd slap the son of a bitch, or you'd go to the cops and say, he's harassing me. Okay? Why is it okay for Trump to do it then? Because he was doing that to everybody. All the women. All the black people, all the Latino people. He was insulting everybody. The veterans. Okay? I mean, that's why I was, I was saying that he's going to have a hard time to win this thing because he insulted everybody. But apparently, nobody got the insults. Okay? Because they weren't really listening to him. They were listening to 
uh, Laura Ingram or Sean Hannity, you know, people like that. They were more focused on what they were saying about, you know, what Trump was saying. They were getting it filtered through these big, for these mouths, everything Trump was saying, they would filter it to their audience. So they were getting Trump's speeches secondhand, leaving out all the nasty shit he was saying, okay? And, <laughs> you know, you only got like half the fucking message that way. You didn't hear that stuff. I mean, you, maybe you need to get, you know, some of you people ought to go on YouTube and, and rewatch some of the speeches he gave as they were recorded because there were people there that had recorded that stuff on their cell phones or, you know, just, uh, you know, had that stuff there. Listen to what he's telling you. You know, now that the election's over, you've got no reason not to do it now, okay? Because you've already set everything in motion. So get on there. And re-listen to what he was telling you. And fucking do the fact check now, okay? You got the time now. And you'll have a plenty of time when you're out of work, okay, to do all the homework you should have done before you voted, all right? So you'll, you'll have plenty of time to analyze and investigate what Trump's been doing, what he really meant, okay, what he was talking about when he was talking about tariffs, okay? You'll have all kinds of time now, okay? You'll need something to distract you when your belly's grumbling because you don't have any food you can't afford to buy. <laughs> or you, you don't have a job in order to buy the food. <laughs> okay? You're going to have all kinds of time now to learn something. Take that time and fucking learn it. Jesus. You know, <clears throat> I, I really, I, I find myself, you know, feeling like I'm the teacher here to a lot of people. And I didn't, I didn't want that job basically to be a teacher, you know, I, I just, I figure, you know, I trust everybody in my age group and stuff like that to know things like I do. Okay. Even people that are like 20 years younger than me, I expect, you know, if you graduated from high school or you did any college, you ought to know something, you ought to know things and you know, you ought to have some common sense and not to trust every goddamn grifter that walks into your life. You know, my father taught me that. Okay. Not to trust everybody. Especially someone who's looking to sell you something. Okay? When you walk into a fucking bank and a banker makes you an offer, you better check your wallet on the way out. Okay? Things like that. Always fucking double check, triple check, fact check. Do all these things before you commit to something. And an election, that's a big goddamn must. You gotta do that. Otherwise, you're not really doing your duty as a citizen of this country if you don't take the time. Stop snorting your coke, you know, stop, you know, smoking your weed or whatever the hell it is you're doing all the time when you're not watching the news or learning anything. Put it aside and take the time to fucking uh, understand things uh, better. Don't just shit on the other side because they got a D next to their name. Actually listen to them. Like, you know, like we were listening to Trump, even though Kamala was out there, we were also listening to what he was saying because how are we to know? the mistakes he was going to make if we don't listen to what he says. You guys never bothered to listen to Kamala. A lot of you didn't. Some of you did, but a lot of you didn't. Okay? Because if you did, the inf the things you were spitting back about Kamala that weren't true, you and we know you got it from somebody else. Somebody was feeding you what she was saying. You know who that was? Fox News, right? When she would give a speech, Fox News would tell you what she said. You wouldn't listen to that as she was saying it. But they were giving you, well, you know, a different interpretation, twisting the meaning behind things she was saying. But you didn't, you were pulling things out of context. You guys weren't getting it from the right source. You should have been watching the rallies. You should have been, you know, when they had the, uh, the RNC convention on TV, you should have been watching that, okay? Uh, and you should have listened. Instead, you weren't listening. You were too eager to criticize every little thing that was going on. I know because when I was watching it live, I had the streaming on the side of people leaving comments. And I saw the comments that people were making about her. And it was all superficial. It was all ridiculous bullshit, name-calling, you know, misogynistic crap. Had nothing to do with anything she was saying. They just, you know, they, they would focus on somebody in the audience. They'd say, oh, that goofball. Okay, they approached you know, this, that matter in the wrong way. Okay. That's not why, that's not how you, uh, you know, that's not how you handle yourself 
when you're trying to understand the opposition. Okay? You know, and I just, I feel like a lot of people just close their mind off when it comes to politics. They want their side to win. They don't want to hear the other side because they have preconceived ideas about who that person may be or may not be. And they don't want to have anybody tell them different. Okay, because then they don't, they'd feel like we, we were fooled, we were, were wrong, you know, we got scammed. Well, here you are, you're scammed, a lot of people found out, Trump lied to them about the tariffs, and now they're worried because now prices are going to go up, and people who were bitching all this time, especially MAGA, about how expensive things are, and blaming it all on Biden, and then on Kamala, well, guess what? Now you can blame it all on Trump because when he gets in there and the prices start to skyrocket again, you're all going to be right back to where you were. You didn't get anywhere, did you? <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so that's it for today, and I hope uh, everybody has a great rest of the week. So subscribe, comment, and share. Keep your ears open for health-related issues, and please be kind to each other out there, and uh, I will talk to you later, so take care, everybody.